And welcome back, everybody. We are on Unit 2, Lesson 4, the Trans-Saharan Trade Route. Now, this uh, trade route is often overlooked. Um, this is a big, big trade route, and it has so many things to offer. So I'm going to share some of those. Uh, it it's really gets uh, Sub-Saharan Africa into the global tapestry as a major player in Afro-Eurasia. So... What do you have here? Well, you have diasporic communities. You have people who are spreading their culture and their beliefs and their lifestyle all up and down this route. Uh, you're going to have these camels with these crazy saddles that allow them to carry goods. You're going to have astrolabes being used in the desert, not just the ocean, to help navigate with the stars. Ibn Battuta, he's all up and down this route, and he's he's a big contributor to his writings as his travels in here. Uh, this guy is everywhere. You're going to have Mansa Musa. You're going to have the real Lion King, not the Disney movie. You're going to have the group that defeat the Mongols. Mongols. Yep, they're on it also. You're going to have an amazingly large spread of Islam throughout the region. So it's got everything. It's overshadowed, I think, in some ways by the other two trade routes, but this is a really important cultural uh, cauldron uh, of Africa. So the sub-Saharan Africa is going to join the Golden Tapestry through this route. Now, this is a tough, harsh route, man. You have, you have long stretches of deserts, and you better know where that oasis is, so navigation is key. Um, the goods that are being sold along this route are salt, gold, slaves, and copper, among other things. You're getting some trickle of these refined goods from the Silk Road. Uh, you're getting other things from the Indian Ocean trade route, they're, but they're not much because they're being carried by ca camels. So, and the development of Islam in Sub-Saharan in Saharan and Sub-Saharan Africa are going to be a major thing. We've talked about the importance of Timbuktu earlier. This is really what makes it come alive. So this trade route, we can see it's coming out of the uh, region of Cairo, and it's spreading and you have various routes there's not one trans-saharan route it's a new it's a network of trade it also is going to connect spain so you're going to start getting some goods heading out and into europe from this route this route also precedes the time period that we're talking of this thing starts before the christian era it had been around for a long time but it, as goods increase as technology increases and as communication between these cultures increase you're going to have a lot more uh, trade going on. And the development, of course, of Timbuktu is a big, big deal. Some people you have to go know is Ibn Battutu and Mansa Musa, who we discussed earlier. And here he is. And what uh, what shines in this picture is the gold. The gold. This dude is rich and Timbuktu becomes very rich from this trade route. We can get an example here. This is an example of the Catalan Atlas. You got the original layout of Timbuktu, uh, artist sketch of it. Uh, this is what the trade route might have looked like. It didn't change much in look, although you can see that this is a later one because it has soldiers with uh, muskets or rifles. Another good picture, you get a good idea of what it might look like at a rest stop along this trade route. And here you have a slave market. Slave trade was a big part of this trade route. And they were going, they were shifting from various parts of Africa as different uh, tribes were defeated by other tribes. And the slave trade uh, was very much a part of this. Mostly at this time, we're not talking about African slavery going to the Americas. This is the period where slaves are being sold up and down in sub-Saharan Africa and into the Middle East. So causes and effects and growth of networks of trade. Again, we're focusing on cause and effect. And we are saying our claim is that this, these routes did more, had more to do with the shaping of old and new cultures than anything else in this time period. It was trade, and generally speaking, it's peaceful, which is a great way to exchange culture rather than option two, which is warfare and diaspora. So it's a much uh, kinder way to spread your culture, and that's what we talk about trade. Trade is always a net positive when in relations to nations because it has them developing a give and take with each other. And the idea is if I'm trading with you, I don't want, I don't have to fight you for what I need. And that's why it's a net positive is it 
it's a force for peace overall in world history. So these are going to link um, the Mediterranean through North Africa and then into West Africa and or East Africa. You're going to have some luxury goods from the Silk Road uh, trickling down here, but not that many. And they're exceptionally expensive. So if you're getting cloth uh, or if you're getting textiles, you're getting glasswork, you're getting silk, you're getting the spices, you're getting the books for all the way from China, which would be over here. I'm not going off my, you can see my cursor. I'm just leaving. Well, it's going to be really expensive when it gets here. You're going to get grain, yams, uh, different uh, food materials might go back up, but not that well because, again, space is limited. Uh, these are camels. You don't have trucks. Now, the camel saddle is going to be a great innovation that we're going to talk about, and it's the camel that is the workhorse, no pun intended, of this route. These camels are tough. They can go long distances. They work well with humans. Um they can carry tremendous burdens and they have a way of not needing, they can go long distances without drinking water. And when they drink water, boy, they drink water. They drink a lot. And that's what the hump is. The hump has a lot of fat and that contains the water that they need to keep going in the desert. The camel saddle is an important innovation and it's constantly being improved on. Uh, and it allows these camels to really become beasts of burden and carry large payloads uh, relatively speaking, uh, the way that the camels could be used for packing gear, packing, and also carrying people. So they could carry people, they could carry, they could carry trade goods, they could carry a combination of both. And the camel saddle is an important innovation. So that again is one of the causes of the Im of the impact of this trade route are the camels and the camel saddles. One big development that's happening down here is Mali is getting so, so rich and Timbuktu is getting so important that you have the beginning of a centralized government taking form in this part of the world. The Mali kingdom is centralized. They develop a social hierarchy. They kind of, the Malian house have develop a unique and very identifiable social structure. And it looks very much the same, doesn't it, that we've seen in other places. It's interesting that all these societies develop the same social structure it's a it's a it's a similarity that these um places have and as they get more centralized they get more structured and the uh, system takes over at the very top you have the royalty and then you have the people who support them and typically speaking these are the religious leaders and the political leaders and the high placed families merchant class this is that group now in the middle this group in the middle here you have the day-to-day -day religious people, not the leaders. The leaders are kind of up in here, and you have the military. And again, these are becoming your middle classes, all right? This right here is your working classes. And then, of course, at the bottom, you have slaves who have little, if any, rights or say. Although, again, the slavery that many of you are used to, do, used to from American slavery in North and South America is not quite the same the way it is there. Of course, slavery is an awful, evil, horrible system based on exploitation, and the goal is always coin and using power to get it, and we've talked about that in previous videos and other times. So one development that you have and that we see in other places, whenever you have centralization of power, and that's an effect of this trade route, especially in the Mali and Hausa Kingdom, with it comes a structured social order, and it always is the same. So that's a short video about a very important trade route. Um, you know, we, it, we've we gone, this is our third video on trade routes, we kind of can see, but hopefully you're able now to start looking at cause and effect, and you're able to put this into a sentence or into a paragraph. So if I'm talking about how did the trade route effect uh, cities along the Trans-Saharan route, you would say the growth of cities, the development of a centralized state in the Mali and Hausa area, and then social structures. All right, have a great day, and I'll see you next time as we travel through world history.